What's up everybody? It's Trey Hardy here again with another amazing vlog. Today we're at the Memorial in uh, Hayesville, North Carolina at the uh, square. So uh, let's go on another epic adventure. Thank you guys for coming today and helping us celebrate in honor of our fallen comrades. Uh, our friends and neighbors and loved ones, those since the founding of our great nation who have died in service to their country. I am not going to have the invocation by uh, BFW Chaplain Chuck Van Gorder. I should have brought my tripod. I'm all right. It's perfect right here. It's zoomed in all the way. Okay. Well, no, last night on the PPS station, they had a memorial service. It was the 33rd one that they had had. Yep, I watched it. They had five recipients and the Medal of Honor. One of them had lost his right hand because an enemy grenade is thrown in where he and his comrades were. So it just had to be doing yard work in the background. Yeah. O oh, sovereign ruler of the universe, who art the Lord of hosts and God of peace, without thee all efforts are vain. We bless thee, O oh Lord, and, and bless the dependence of our departed comrades and the comfort all who gave their loved ones to our nation's cause. We sometimes forget about the price that the families pay who stay at home and pray and write and hope that their loved ones will come back to them at the end of their tour of duty. Continue thy favor upon our order. Help us to practice the spirit of comradeship both in our councils and the world at large. Enable us to better the community in which we live through our devotion to duty and citizens. These are the, our necessary blessings and we ask them for the world in the universe. And we appreciate beyond words the sacrifice of all these who have died for our freedom in the past and the, the families who stayed loyally uh, their side in spirit and we ask that you comfort and give hope to them I would dare say that everyone in this crowd has lost an individual or individuals in their families and some of the past wars. thank you God bless you. Amen. We now have a posting of the colors by the Honor Guard, commanded by Dwight McClure.
Boy, you turn that shit off back there. The fallen right there. Uh, before we say the Pledge of Allegiance, I want to read an article to you written by Senator John Glenn in uh, 2008. I think I'll find it appropriate. Sorry about that. This was, as you can imagine, a wonderful change was a direct result of the efforts of millions of Americans on behalf of a few hundred POWs 10,000 miles from home. One of the men who moved into my room was a young man named Mike Christian. Mike came from a small town in Selma, Alabama. He didn't wear a pair of shoes until he was 13 years old. At 17, he enlisted in the United States Navy. He later earned a commission by going to Austin's training school. Then he became a naval flight officer and was shot down and captured in 1967. Mike had a keen and deep appreciation for the opportunities this country and our military provided for people who want to work and want to succeed. As part of the change in treatment, Vietnamese allowed prisoners to receive packages from home. And some of these packages were handkerchiefs, scars, and items of clothing. Mike got himself a bamboo needle. Over a period of a couple of months, he created an American flag and which he sewed on the inside of his shirt. Every afternoon, before we had a bowl of soup, we would hang Mike's shirt on the wall of the cell and say Pledge of Allegiance. I know the Pledge of Allegiance may not seem like, like the most important part of our day now, <laughs> but I can assure you, but I can assure you that in that stark cell, it was indeed the most important and meaningful event. One day, the Vietnamese searched our cell, as they did periodically and discovered Mike's shirt with the flag stolen inside and removed it. That evening, they returned opened the door of the cell, and for the benefit of all of us, beat Mike Christian severely for the next couple of hours. Then, they opened the door of the cell and threw him in. We cleaned him up as well as we could. The cell in which we lived had a concrete slab on the middle of which we slept with four bare light bulbs in each corner. As I said, we tried to clean Mike up as well as we could. After the excitement died down, I looked over in the corner of the room, sitting there beneath a dim light bulb, and a piece of red cloth, another shirt, and his bamboo needle was my friend Mike. He was sitting there with his eyes almost shut for the meeting he had received, making another American flag. He was not making that flag because it made my Christian feel better. He was making that flag because he knew how important it was for us to be able to pledge our allegiance to our flag and our country. So the next time you say the Pledge of Allegiance, you must never forget the sacrifice and courage that thousands of Americans have made to build our nation and promote freedom around the world. You must remember our duty, our honor, and our country. 
if you will please stand now and we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. branches flags from your left to right. When I do, will you please stand, if able, or raise your hand when your branch of service is called. Army. Thank you. Marines. service their country from Clay County. If you please see me after the service, I would appreciate it. I'd like to get their names and there's some way to contact family members. As you know, our government has set aside Monday as a 
uh, of May, last Monday of May as a nationwide day to honor all of our very fallen heroes. When I was growing up in the 50s and 60s, to me, Memorial Day was a three-day weekend just before school got out. Another day I had to attend school. My father, that I remember, did not inform me of the why or the importance of this day. Believe me, since then I have found out how important this day is for not only myself, but for veterans and this whole country as a whole. I believe that today, Memorial Day, to most people still mean the start of the summer vacations, not the sober holiday, but a sober honor that is meant to be. We have been lax in passing this knowledge along to our next generations, which is why you will find our military veterans, such as you see here today, heavily involved in local Memorial Day ceremonies all across this great country of ours. Honoring this day has been a part of a patriotic America, which in today's world is not a given. So it behooves us to pass along a new sense of patriotism to those that we love, friends, and others. The founding of an infant nation, patriotism has been at the forefront. Men and women who are honoring here today who fought and died to launch a new nation that became the greatest nation on earth, the United States of America. Since that founding, men and women from all walks of life have stepped up when our nation has called. And as we know, a great many have died honoring that call. That's patriotism, that's love of country. As we honor those who have given so much, let us not forget those veterans who served honorably. Those who have been wounded in combat, those who have been prisoners of war or missing in action, we the people of the nation, <coughs> We owe them our blessing and our gratitude. And at this time, I'd like to introduce American Legion Commander Rondo Brown, who will explain our missing chair, D-O-W-M-I-A, missing chair. Sorry, my hands will start to shake. I got it. Should have brought my tripod. The chair, please. Thank you, Commander. That was an honor that Mr. George LeDuc always did. The table is round to show our everlasting concern for our missing men. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives. When answering the call of duty, the single red rose displayed in the bus reminds us of the life of each of the missing and their loved ones and the friends of these Americans who keep the faith awaiting an answer. The vase is tied with a red ribbon, symbol of our continued determination to account for our missing. A slice of lemon on the bread plate is to remind us of the bitter fate of those captured and missing in foreign lands. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears endured by those okay. missing and their families who seek answers. The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain those lost from our country, founded as one nation under God. The glass is inverted to symbolize their inability to share their morning, morning toast. The chairs are empty. They are missing. They will never feel the warm embrace from a mother that gave them life. 
or feel the strong hands of a father that cherished them. Their voices will never again be heard by family and friends and their shadow will never cross the threshold of the door from which they grew up, the house they called home. They are the prisoners of war. They are our missing, missing in action. They gave all for us, and today we remember. Oh, got to switch a battery. Sorry, battery died. Good thing I got my spares. See that lady over there with tears flowing down her face? She was a nurse in triage in MASH in Lake A base. And that guy over there, he was a combat medic at Baram base. Hey Gary! Yeah Bob? You reckon this is just a dream? Reflecting off our minds? Producing this emotional scene? So Bob? Yeah Gary? What if it's really true? Could we have died in combat serving the red, white, and blue? You must be right about that. Most of them are grieving. No wonder they can't hear us. Look at the items they are leaving. Old letters, mementos from the past. They remind them of when we were alive. Vets with so many physical wounds, agonizing deeply inside. Hey Bob, what's that Gary? At least America remembers us all who went into name of, in the name of freedom when Uncle Sam gave the call. Maybe our country learned something from them, Iraq and Afghanistan, so history will not repeat. If we must fight, fight to win and let the politicians be discreet. Notice the youth who are passing by asking why so many died, maybe they will have liberty and their mamas won't have to cry. America, America if anyone, anyone can, can hear them, them they are America's freedom's cause. Love, love and protect with all you have. have. At least you find your freedom is lost. Freedom is not free. Thank you guys. On the agenda, we have uh, a BFW auxiliary member uh, Becky Van Gorder, who will read a poem from after World War One.
Now the photos you see in front of us here, all around us, these are all photos of the, the men and women of the women of here. All these men, they have died in Clay County serving their country, the United States of America. Uh, I'd like to introduce Ms. Linda Bond of the VFW Auxiliary and Cecilia Phillips of the American Legion Auxiliary who will read the names. Teresa McClure. Amazing grace. My heart 
the mayor, Joe Slayton. Stay up, Joe. Let everybody see you. He has sponsored today's program for us, and we thank him very much for that. The well, last final words I'm going to talk about is we must remember the parents and siblings. who have lost their loved ones. The mother who hung a blue star in her window indicating that she has a son or daughters in harm's way. That same mother changing the banner to a gold star indicating that her daughter or son had died in the service to their country. We have been in the foreign wars, the American Legion, and the citizens of this great country Thank you for your loved one's service, and we thank you for your sacrifice, because you too have made a big sacrifice. A lifelong suffering and missing of a loved one. We are now give our salute to our fallen comrades. Before we start, I want to... We have a young man from Hayesville High School here today who's going to play taps for us, Wesley Meyer. Commander. Oh. I had to pull the cell phone out because the card is full. I didn't bring my spare one. Excuse me. Okay, we're folding the flag now.
This time we're going to raise the flag to full stack. BFW member Sam Davis is going to dip the flag and then raise it to full stack. American Legion Chaplain Carl Maxwell. Please remain standing if you're able and please uncover. Today we honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We pray that you will bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service and the struggle to preserve our freedoms, 
our safety, and our country's heritage for all of us. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made, for their many different contributions to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, and we are proud of them, and we pray that you will watch over these special people and bless them with your love, peace, and grace. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming today. We appreciate it. It's a nice turnout. Uh, if anybody needs some water, there's a cooler up here in front with ice water in it. <laughs> and uh, another note, uh, we have a, the VFW's auxiliary has a raffle, has sold raffle tickets to Ingalls, and uh, they're going to have the drawing right here. So if you purchase tickets, you might stand by, you might be a winner. Okay, everybody, it's Trey Hardy here. Sorry, my SD card on my camera is full. This is actually the new camera. Remember, I said the old one had problems. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video. Uh, everything's not all about barbecues all the time. Today, we honor our vets for give, you know giving up their lives to uh, protect our freedoms. And uh, I'm out, so see you on the future.